You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hi there, Steph here, and welcome back to another episode of the Slow Living Podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day, and I am so happy you are here and you are a part of the Slow Down Society. So thank you again. I really am happy and appreciative that you're giving me a bit of your attention. So we're going to talk today about establishing a morning routine. And depending on who you are, when you hear that, you may just sort of, I don't know, brush me off like, yeah, Steph, I know, morning routine, blah, blah, blah. But let's think about it. Are you actually doing it? Are you actually utilizing a morning routine? Are you doing something that is helpful to you, that's helping you move forward on your personal goals and you feel sort of recharged and excited to get up in the morning because you get to spend this time all alone with yourself. And then also, how does this work? How do you establish a morning routine when you're exhausted (laughs) or when you're caring for other people or if you've got babies in your bed? How does this work? How can you have a grown-up version of a morning routine if you don't have all that much time and you are super crazy tired and you the idea of getting up even earlier than you're already getting up just sounds <laughs> like a deal breaker. Uh, no way. No way, Jose. I am not doing that. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. So I am a firm believer in establishing a morning routine and it doesn't need to be perfect and it doesn't need to have a whole bunch of different components in it. It needs to serve you and your needs well. And my kids are super old now and they take care of themselves and they were not always this way. I I vividly remember getting up and sneaking out of bed and I had a a baby in there and I would nurse her one last time and kind of roll carefully away from her and sneak away in order to go take a shower and get dressed and try and center myself and get ready for the day before then getting her up and dressed and ready for the day. So there's really no one right way. And so if you think that you have to do this and you have to journal and you have to meditate and you have to do yoga and you have to have a certain kind of coffee and it, I don't know, needs to be bulletproof and have collagen in it and all of this stuff. Stop and take a deep breath and let all of that go. Because where you are today is where you are today. And it's just fine. You are exactly where you're supposed to be for who you are and for this age and stage of your life and for your kid's life. And it's not going to be perfect. And newsflash, (laughs) even when they're all grown and you're alone in the house, it's not going to ever be perfect. So release that expectation of yourself because that's, it's just not correct. This is real life and you are a real human and real humans have good days and bad days and in-between days and Days when, I don't know, the washing machine breaks and you've got stuff that you need to take care of and all of a sudden there's a flood in the garage. That's real. And even the best laid plans sometimes go awry. So relax, shake it off. (laughs) This is not perfection here. This is trying to do the best you can with the game of cards you're playing right this very second. Okay, so why should you have a morning routine? 
if what you're doing now is working for you, you don't need to change it as far as I'm concerned. And, and that's what coaching is really all about. It's taking you from where you are to where you want to be. So if you're already exactly where it is you want to be and everything is working a-okay and you don't think anything needs to be tweaked or perfected or changed or modified because everything's just fine, then don't worry about it. That's great. (laughs) I, I am super thrilled and excited and happy for you. And if you have any advice that you can send to the rest of us, we are all ears and ready to have. But for most of us, I think most of us kind of have this kind of inner inkling that perhaps things could be a little better and maybe a little easier and maybe not have our mornings feel rushed or have that sort of behind feeling. It's not, it's not fun to, to get up and look at the clock and already feel that sort of frantic feeling like there's too much to do and not enough time to do it. So that's why setting yourself up with a morning routine can be really very helpful if you do have that sort of feeling. It can so in general what I would like is for your morning routine to help improve your stress levels, sort of appease your anxiety a bit and promote productivity. And really the best way to ensure that is to try and go to bed early. <laughs> which doesn't sound fun, but going to bed at the same time and, and the night before deciding that you're going to get a good night's sleep and deciding what time you're going to get up um, will just sort of kind of set your internal clock a little better. And you have to count backwards. You need to figure out how much sleep you're going to get and what time you need to leave the house in the morning and, and try and figure it out. So adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. So the middle number there is eight. Some people need seven. Some people need nine. Yes, there are people who can get away with less than seven and people who need more than nine. But in general, the average adult needs seven to nine hours of sleep. I happen to need nine hours of sleep. I feel the best if I sleep over eight hours and that's just how it is. So for me, I like to be fully asleep by 9, 10 p.m. at the latest every night and and that's what I would like. Um, I don't always get the nine hours of sleep that my body craves and needs and so there are times that on the weekends I catch up and I love napping. So I'm, I'm happy to take a nap on the weekend hours to catch up. I, when I am working out of the house, I need to leave the house by 7.30 every morning. So in order to do that, I really need about two hours to myself to just try and kind of get it all going. So 7.30 minus two hours is 5.30. So if I get up, somewhere around 5 or 5.30. I have enough time to do all of the things that I want to do so I don't feel rushed to get out of the house. That said, because I work for myself and I am trying to do a little bit more than just those two hours, many days I actually do get up at 4 a.m., which, which means I'm actually sacrificing a little bit of sleep here in order to get the things done that I want to do. So if you're in the middle of a great big huge project or if you're working two jobs, um, I don't want to tell you something that I'm not doing myself. So I want to be very upfront and honest that I will sacrifice sleep if I have something I'm trying to accomplish, if I've got an early morning coaching call with a client, if I'm trying to write something, um, I'm in the middle of, of writing a new book right now and I've got kind of a hard and fast deadline. And so I am getting up earlier than I need to. And so 
that's that's what I'm doing. So I'm I'm goofing around <laughs> for myself between four and five, four and five thirty, and then I sort of start my morning routine. So what does it look like? And this is something that I do, and it's not something that you need to do. What I really want you to do is figure out what works for you. But what works for everybody is to try your hardest to maintain a fixed bedtime and waking time because consistency is the heart of any routine. And not only will this set you up for a better day ahead, it can also provide more restful sleep at night because you just sort of know what time you're getting up. You're not constantly second guessing yourself and thinking, okay, well, my alarm's going to get up at five, but really I don't have to get up at bed. I don't need to get out of bed until 5.15 or 5.30. And so if you're already deciding that, you're already pre-deciding that you're going to set or hit that snooze button, that is not something I recommend at all decide and and stick to it and sort of release the second guessing and the decision fatigue of, of trying to think up something new each night or each morning. So one of my best tricks is that I say out loud to Siri, hey Siri, set the alarm for 5 a.m. And Siri sets the alarm for me. So saying it out loud, one, sets my alarm, but two, I'm hearing it and, and it's an action thing. And I'm sort of setting myself up. So if you ever have watched Seinfeld, there's an episode where Kramer talks about how he's setting his internal alarm. Doing that really will help sort of set your internal alarm. And then I put the phone on the other side of the room. I cannot reach it at all unless I fully get all the way out of bed And then I'm fumbling around to find how to turn it off. And because my feet are on the ground, I am vertical, I am standing, I am already kind of pretty much awake. And because I've had three children (laughs) and I am 45, that means my body's like, huh, you should go potty stuff. So then totally walk on over to the bathroom, use the bathroom. And by then I am awake it's time. It's time to put my slippers on and go downstairs and and make some coffee and get the day going. So that is how I sort of, I don't want to say fool myself, but I, I just sort of create this environment where it's easier to stick to what I had planned than it is to crawl back in bed. Does that make sense? Because if your phone is right next to you or under your pillow or something like that, and all you have to do is hit off or hit snooze, you're not standing. Your eyes aren't like awake. You're not fully functioning. It is just so much easier to not honor the commitment that you decided the night before you're going to do. And and I, I want you to honor your commitments. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel proud of yourself. So I suggest if you are not an early morning riser and the idea of giving yourself an hour or two for no reason to sort of set yourself up sounds daunting, then don't go so big. (laughs) Don't go so big in the beginning. Start with an extra 30 minutes, something where you can kind of luxuriate in the shower and drink your coffee slowly. Um, I do really, really like journaling. Um, I, on Amazon, there's a 30 days to a new you journal. Um, I love it. I use it myself. Um, I buy, (laughs) I buy 10 at a time at the beginning of of the new year. I was about to say school year because we're getting close to the school year. Um, but I, I buy them. I, I give them as gifts to my friends, all my coaching clients use them. So, so that is a helpful daily journal. I also have a one page worksheet that my coaching clients use and I use, and I'm, I'm recently <laughs> having my daughters use them also, because I just think it's super helpful. And in that one page coaching worksheet, it has daily intention. It has slots for affirmation. It has sort of doing a brain dump of what are the things that you have to do 
in order to make today feel good. So if you're interested in that one pager, email me and I'm happy to send you a copy. I don't think it, it's not currently on my website. Maybe at some point it will be, but it's not as of this recording. So if you want a copy, just email me. I'm at Steph at stephanieoday.com and say, Hey Steph, I'd like a copy of your one page journaling worksheet. And I'm happy to send that over to you. So I think getting into the routine of quieting your brain and sort of clearing it out and doing a little bit of brain dumping is just a calm and peaceful way to set your intention and sort of figure out what it is you want to accomplish today. How do you want to feel? And for me, that is how I start. And and that's the first question on the worksheet is, how do you want to feel today? And then you answer that. So sometimes you might want to feel productive. Sometimes you might want to feel peaceful. Some days you might want to feel confident. Some days you might want to feel... I don't know, exhilarated or thrilled or happy or excited. So you get to decide what type of day you're going to have by what type of feeling you're going to cultivate and then working backwards from there. Okay, so you want to feel excited today. How are you going to cultivate that feeling? And, And figuring out what it is, the things that you have to do, the things that have to get checked off the list in order to feel the way you want to feel. So let's talk a little bit about eating frogs. Have you ever heard that phrase before? So some sort of personal development, self-help guru type people talk about eating frogs first thing in the morning. And um, Brian Tracy, actually, he's a, I've talked about him before because he wrote the book, The 21 Success Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires, but he also wrote a time management and productivity book called Eat That Frog. And it's actually a play on an old phrase by Mark Twain. And Mark Twain had said that the first thing he does in the morning is he eats a frog. And this is a metaphor. I'm pretty sure Mark Twain wasn't running around and catching frogs and frying them up and eating them. But it was the idea that doing the thing you don't want to do the thing that is is worrying you, it's causing the most anxiety throughout your day. Do that first because then it's done and over with. And so then the rest of the day will be easy peasy, pumpkin squeezy, all, I don't know, I'm totally mixing metaphors here, but but just all smooth sailing. So Mark Twain would talk about how he figured if he ate this big gnarly frog first thing in the morning and got it over with, the rest of his day would absolutely be better than the time he spent eating that frog. And so Brian Tracy uses it for for sort of business people and they look at their to-do list and what is the thing that they keep procrastinating on? Is it making a sales call? Is it sending that email? Is it writing that proposal? So what is it that you keep procrastinating on and do that first? So that is great advice if you are uninterrupted and can close your door and put a do not disturb sign up and and just buckle down and get to work. And yes, you will absolutely be more productive if that's what you do. But since this is real life and you are a real human and not a robot, chances are if you're getting up in the morning and you know the first thing you have to do is something that you're actually dreading doing, you're not going to do it. You're just not going to do it. So I don't want you to do that. (laughs) I want you to do the thing in the morning that you want to do, that excites you, that that makes you want to jump out of bed and and start the day and and get excited. So I've I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, that when I get out of bed, I hear my alarm. It's on the other side of the room. I get out of bed. I turn off the button. First thought I have is, okay, Steph, bring it on. Or today is the day that the Lord has made. I, I have that sort of thought in my head. Every once in a while, it's, oh, what a beautiful morning. Sometimes it's, oh, I am so lucky. I get to go do this. Like I love having that sort of peaceful, quiet time in the house with me in the coffee pot and my journaling. And it's just lovely and and wonderful. And, And it's something that 
I really do think anyone, anywhere can benefit from, no matter what age or stage of life you're in. And again, if you're up all night because you're nursing babies and you've got crying toddlers and teething and ear infections and all of this kind of stuff, and there's just no way, no how that it's going to happen, it's okay. It's fine. Relieve yourself from that sort of burden of thinking that you're doing something wrong because you are not doing anything wrong. This is real life. And if journaling doesn't happen smack dab in the middle of the morning when everyone else is quiet, that's okay. Find a different time. Maybe it's during breakfast and your your kids are, are settled down and they're watching a show and you can sneak off to Uh, another room and and sort of have 10 to 15 minutes by yourself or quasi by yourself to sort of do some brain dumping and some journaling. That is totally fine. And then as far as exercising and going to the gym or going for a run or doing all of these things, if you are a morning exerciser and it makes you feel good about yourself and you feel proud of yourself. Go for it. Do it. Absolutely. Get in an early morning walk. Do some yoga. Go for a run. Weight lift. Do what feels good for you. But again, we're we're not trying to eat frogs. We're not trying to do the things that you're dreading first. So if exercise is a motivator and it makes you happy and excited and it gets those endorphins pumping, put it in your morning routine. Absolutely. But it's no hard and fast rule. It's what works for you. Okay. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. I'd love to hear your different morning routines. I, oh, I wanted to tell you what I do in those two hours. So I get up and, and while the coffee's brewing, I usually do my journaling and then I scan email. And if it looks like there's anything that I need to respond to right then and there, I do. Then I set up the emails that I need to get going for the day. And so if it's a crockpot email, I set that up. If it's a slow living email, I set that up. Um, I post on social. And so all of that takes, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes or so. And I'm drinking my coffee the whole time. And, and it's just quiet and it's peaceful. Sometimes I've lit candles and, and, I, and I do that. Then I sort of scroll the headlines, make sure nothing major <laughs> happened, no wars broke out, no forest fires around the corner. Um, and so I'm just kind of aware. I don't necessarily click on all of the news articles. I just scan the headlines. And then I go to Reddit because I like Reddit. And I scan that for a while. And by then, usually it's 6, 6 15 ish And my husband has joined me in the office And then we chat for a little bit, make sure that we're on the same page of who's picking who up, who's got what activity after work and before dinner, what are we going to have for dinner, what does the evening look like. And then um, I go upstairs, take a shower, get dressed, get fully dressed, hair, makeup, all of the things, wake up Sheldon, give him breakfast, we go for a walk while I'm on the while I'm on my walk, I talk on the phone with my friend Jennifer. If she's not awake yet because I left the house a little early, I listen to a podcast for a little bit, and then I talk to Jennifer, and then I'm back home, 7.20-ish, make sure the kids are all up, they're eating breakfast, everything's fine, lock Sheldon up, I climb in the car, I go to work. So, so that is my morning routine. And so I do an awful lot of things, but it doesn't feel rushed. If it's a day that I want to do yoga or a day that I want to run on a treadmill or something like that, I then add in a little bit more time. So I don't try and truncate my drinking coffee time or my scrolling Reddit or Facebook or whatever it is time because that's what I want to do. I want to do what I want to do. And so if doing some yoga or going for a run, or if I've got a writing project needs to happen, I then decide to get up a little bit earlier rather than trying to sort of shrink down any of the other stuff that I do. And that is what works for me. And so I want you to figure out something that works and feels right for you. Okay. 
All right. Consider yourself loved and hugged. I'd love to hear from you. If you've got your own morning routine and you've been at it for years and years and it works, great. Let me know. Let us all know. Take care. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.